For our last example on this handout, we are going to look at something that looks more akin to the sort of messes you might see in practice, where you have a bunch of non-convenient bounds. Our outer loop here has a 2n and a 3n squared plus 5n. Our inner loop has some i cubed plus i squared nonsense going on there. This is a royal mess just looking at it. So how are we going to deal with this? Well, no place to start except for writing them as a summation. So we have t of n is equal to the sum from i equals 2n to 3n squared plus 5n. The inner loop is j equals 1 to i cubed plus i squared. And the cost of one run is still constant. Now, in order to understand what's going to happen here, we are going to just simplify the inner loop and see if where we go from there. Sum from i equals 2n to 3n squared plus 5n of c times i cubed plus i squared. There are many ways that we could approach this. You can do this the very brute force method of split up that summation, look up the formulas for i cubed and i squared, and then find out what happens for this problem. Or we could bound it and be lazy in terms of the amount of math we have to do. We can do this in very few lines and very little time if we use a tiny bit of cleverness along the way. So let's bound this above in a way that makes us not need to do a lot of work. So. What we're going to do is expand the bounds of that summation in a way that is convenient. 2n is a not a very convenient bottom bound. A much more convenient bottom bound would be 1. We are increasing the number of terms of the summation by increasing the bottom bound of the summation. We are adding more terms to it. Similarly, we are going to do the same thing for the top bound in a way that is convenient. That 3n squared is the convenient bound. It's the one that should dominate the growth. So let's make the other term there, the 5n, larger, make it look like 5n squared. And then we have increased the range both in the bottom and in the top of the summation, therefore adding up more terms while dropping none, and therefore making it bigger. We're going to do a similar sort of trick with the contents of the summation. I'm going to replace the i squared with an i cubed. Now let's combine the stuff we've created. So we now have the sum from i equals 1 to 8n squared of 2ci cubed. Now we've really kind of helped ourselves out. You could again resort to formulas here if you wanted, but we've already given up hope on an exact answer because we've started bounding. So might as well just keep with the bounding. So this is less than or equal to the sum from i equals 1 to 8n squared of 2c times 8n squared quantity cubed. We now have eliminated the summation index and are adding up a fixed thing, 2c times quantity 8n squared cubed, ugly, but it's fixed, a fixed number of times. So this is equal to, we have 8n squared copies of 2c times 8 cubed, let me write that a little neater, 2c times 8 cubed n to the 6th. y n to the 6th, we have n squared cubed, 2 times 3 is 6. Now all my stuff in red here is enough to say that we are in big O of n to the 8. Let's try bounding below in a way that also is convenient. To bound it below, we need to shrink the range. One thing that we might notice is that the important bound is the n squared part, the 3n squared. I'm going to make the bottom bound look like that n squared. I can make the bottom bound closer to the top bound, make the bottom bound larger than it was before by changing it to n squared. 
that's not quite always true. That needs somewhere that n is greater than or equal to 2, but it, that will be for large values of n. I also need to make the top bound smaller. If I drop the 5n term from the top bound, and that's a 3n squared, so I've made the bottom bound bigger and the top bound smaller, therefore adding up fewer terms in the total summation, therefore making the total summation smaller. Similarly, I'm going to drop that ugly i squared that was lingering around because I'm suspecting that the i cubed is the term that is dominating the growth rate. Now let's plug in the value of i that makes that summation the smallest within our range. So this is greater than or equal to the sum from i equals n squared to 3n squared of c times, plug in the value of i that would make it the smallest, which is going to be n squared. Now we are going to just do the arithmetic. We've now eliminated the summation index from the summation, so it's just to see what happens when we go out the other end. This equals the top bound, 3n squared, minus the bottom bound, n squared, plus 1, times c times n to the 6th. Again, n to the 6th, because n squared cubed is n to the 6th. Maybe we do one last simplification here and drop that plus 1, and we have 2n squared times cn to the 6th. So all of this stuff in purple is similar to before, enough to get me that we are in big omega of n to the 8th. So if we are in big O of n to the 8th and big omega of n to the 8th, I had better hope we are in big theta of n to the 8th. So t of n is in theta of n to the 8th. And this is a good way to simplify what might be a horrible mess. If you look, this did not take much work even though those expressions looked awful. This is typical of bounding these messy problems. I strongly encourage you to do this because it tends to make things much, much simpler. That being said, if you have other methods that you prefer, go for the other methods.